Road classification is a fundamental part of planning and managing the road network and involves assigning all the roads within a prescribed jurisdiction to a category according to their function. The assigned category then helps guide future decisions about the operation, maintenance, and planning and development of the network. It also helps guide the expectations about level of service that might be experienced by those who will use or interact with the facility. Classification also has an important impact on the actual accessibility or mobility provided by the infrastructure. Before we get too far into road classification, let's take a quick detour, pun intended, to talk about a few important terms. These terms, level of service, or LOS, and the two terms often used together, mobility and accessibility. Level of service, often shorthanded to LOS, is a mechanism used to determine how well a transportation facility is operating from a traveler's perspective. Typically, six levels of service are defined and each is assigned a letter designation from A to F, with LOS A representing the best operating conditions and LOS F the worst. Transportation planning entities will typically try to achieve a level of service standard equal to the following. In a two hour PM peak, LOSE or better for urban centers and corridors, LOSD or better elsewhere in the remainder of the cities and unincorporated urban growth areas, LOSC or better in rural areas, that is outside of urban growth areas. LOS is one of the most commonly used measures of road capacity and function in transportation engineering. However, like many of the other aspects of traditional road design we've discussed, it focuses on traffic flow and convenience from the driver's perspective over many other users and stakeholders' interests. Take for example Queen Street. If this road were being planned based solely on optimizing LOS, the street would have a level of service of F, meaning projects would be prioritized to speed up the road. While the argument could certainly be made that Queen Street could use fewer lanes and fewer cars, it definitely does not meet an LOS of D or higher. From a business, cyclist, or pedestrian perspective, an LOS of F is preferable. Accessibility and mobility are two very common terms in both transportation planning and engineering. They are frequently confused and often misunderstood. Mobility is the movement of people and goods between different sites. When thinking about mobility, you think of questions like, what mode do you take? And how fast is the trip? On the other hand, accessibility is the ability to reach desired destinations. That is, the ability to get to goods or services or different activities. When thinking about accessibility, we often think about where you can go and what's available when you get there or how much does it cost in terms of the amount of money it costs, the amount of time, and even the distance you have to go. We also think of both these measures at two levels. For mobility, from a personal level, how income and socio-demographics affects people's ability to move around. From a land use transportation perspective, how urban form, mode availability, and infrastructure design allow for movement. We can think of accessibility also at the same levels. At the personal level, how much utility is derived from being able to access a variety of opportunities. Utility here is an economics term, which is characterized by the amount of happiness or satisfaction that's derived from consuming something or partaking in something. In this case, how much satisfaction is derived from being able to access certain types of opportunities. From a land use and transportation perspective, accessibility can be thought of as the design of infrastructure and placement of land uses and how it allows easier access to the opportunities that this placement presents. It's not hard to see how emphasis on accessibility or mobility can lead to different infrastructure. These two terms, when associated with roads, represent a trade-off between low-speed multimodal roads that provide opportunities to many that provide many opportunities to interact with land uses and high-speed, vehicle-oriented highways that emphasize the maximization of flow from point A to point B. 
Both accessibility and mobility are important and appropriate in specific contexts, but it is not uncommon for one objective to gain preference in the wrong context. Take for example the evolution of the street network in the US city of Detroit. Here we see the street network as it existed in 1949. You can probably guess just by looking at the street pattern whether it was designed to emphasize accessibility or mobility. The network itself is laid out predominantly in a grid pattern. Streets are local connectors with a few minor or major arterials. This was not a network designed for speed, but cyclists, pedestrians, and of course, cars to access local businesses and places of residence. Now fast forward 70 years, the land uses and network are nearly unrecognizable. Let's abstract the network from the satellite image and examine whether the network seems to emphasize accessibility or mobility. The grid pattern has been disrupted and local roads have been replaced by restricted access highways. The impact of a mobility-oriented planning focus is even more apparent when we compare the two networks side by side. Examining the city's central core and west side, accessibility has all but vanished in favor of moving people quickly through the city in cars. A look at the contemporary city from a bird's eye view gives a better sense of the land use impacts of mobility-based planning. Ask yourself, does this look like a place that is friendly for pedestrians or cyclists to navigate? Let's return to the concept of road hierarchy. The conventional road hierarchy classifies roads and streets according to their movement and access functions. Roads and streets are designated into different groups or classes according to the type of service each group is intended to provide. The hierarchical classification system is regarded as a fundamental tool for urban development and road network design and management. Auckland has a road hierarchy for itself as well. Auckland Transport has recently updated and reviewed Auckland's road hierarchy. Previously, city and district designations had their own road hierarchy and own definition of the components. This task of reviewing and updating the hierarchy included reviewing the terminology and definitions of the road types, reviewing and updating the primary arterial network, which was previously referred to as regional arterial network, providing a more consistent application of secondary arterials and collectors for both the urban and rural road networks. These classifications that were then broken down into arterials, non-arterials, motorways, collectors or connectors, roads, strategic arterials, local streets, primary arterials, lanes and service lanes, secondary arterials, shared space and shared zones. This classification system will help Auckland Transport further plan and develop our transportation network for the years to come.